Hey guys, I'm Bella, the Maker Mama Boss Lady behind Fiber and Fox, and this is episode 51 of my podcast. Now, this is not my normal setup, and for those of you who have been with me and know that we're redoing some things, this is not the final setup. This is another room of my house, and we're making do for right now. Um, so this is the first time joining me. This is not normally what it looks or probably even sound like lighting. It's not a lot of my stuff is packed up right now. But basically, I'm a crochet designer. I also knit and I talk about all of it with you guys here um, on the internet, not here in this spot because this isn't normally where I do it, but we'll talk about that more in a second. Uh, everything you need to know about me is going to be linked down below, Instagram, blog, shops, all that. And typically I do show notes over on my blog and there's a link in the description box, um, but I may just put the links in the description box this week. We'll see how it goes. It's kind of been a day and I'm not sure if I'm prepping for it to be a week or not. Um, my daughter has been sick, so we're kind of like bracing for, are we, <laughs> which one of us is going to go down? Are we going to make it through? I mean, obviously we're going to make it through, but um, unscathed by the germiness. So we'll see. But I'm doing good for right now and she's sleeping soundly. So this is good news. But it's kind of been like I just took a shower. It's like nine o'clock at night. I just took a shower. Just got dressed just for the sake of the podcast. So I look like I make things. Um, but yeah, it's been a pajamas on the couch, snuggling kind of day, which is fine. Uh, but yes, normally, normally I am podcasting in another room of our house. It is currently under renovation. It will renovation. It will ultimately end up being my husband's office. We have another room that we're renovating that's going to be my office slash homeschool room slash craft room, all of that. Um, and we were gonna do them one at a time. <laughs> I think I talked about it the last podcast. I think I mentioned like, oh, this might be my last podcast in this location. Um, and at that point we thought we had, I think, three weeks um, or so before our team of people were gonna come in and work on it. And then we got like a call like the next day, like, hey, we actually can be there tomorrow. And we're like, okay then, let's move all of our stuff very, very fast. Um, so we moved all of our stuff like to the basement and other rooms of the house and it's all just very discombobulated right now. All of my yarn is in Ikea bags and I kind of know where my stuff is, but um, yeah, it's a little interesting right now, but um, we were gonna do one room at a time and then we talked to the flooring people and it would actually be way cheaper to do both at the same time, like with the flooring prices, so. Um, they're finishing both of the office type spaces and then we're going to redo, regroup, reorganize, and eventually I'll have some vlogs and some organization stuff I think for you guys as well. Um, if you're interested in seeing how I organize my stash, what my stash looks like, all that stuff. Um, still not sure what I'm doing in there. I spent a lot of time looking at rugs online today while we were sitting on the couch. Ah, <sighs> decisions, they're hard. But you're not here for the renovation content. You're here for the crochet and knit content. So let's talk about what I've been making. And I guess actually we should start with what I'm wearing. Uh, this is the Fields cardigan. Da, da, da. Oh, this is also a rocking chair. <laughs> this is a rocker. Um, so if at any point I am rocking, I apologize. I'm going to try to sit very still, but again, making do with the current location. Um, but this is the Fields Cardigan. It is one of my designs, and this is my second version of it. It is listed in my Etsy and Ravelry shops. It's the yellow button-up cardigan. Um, but I made myself a second one. This is Fiber for the People yarn in the colorway Chili. Um, but yes, I was feeling I'm going to be talking about some cardigan situations. And in case anyone's wondering, I didn't make either of those blankets. They were a thrift store rescue, so I don't know what the patterns are there. That's a granny square. That's something else fancier. Um, but yes. Fields cardigan that I put on for the podcast because I'm a podcaster. Let's talk about what I've been making. So I finished the shawl, <laughs> finished objects. Um, we have been talking about the shawl design and what I was going to do with it last time. I was about halfway done um, and I am, I mean, done now other than weaving in the ends. I want to make sure I get the pattern written up first, but oh, I love it. I really love it. Um, so yeah, all the scraggly endy bits are gonna gonna go away, but this is Still haven't settled on the name um, at this point the pattern is drafted and I need to just get it in a readable shape for testers, um, but I'm hoping to be doing a testing call soon again the Schedule is what it is. My office is a little in boxes in the basement right now um, and Yeah, I, I might be very sick this week. We're gonna find out uh, but this 
was the part I had had done last time. It's another of my dandelion stitch. Yeah, the lighting in here, guys, I'm sorry, is not as great. You're definitely kind of getting a blue type hue. Um, I only have some of my lighting equipment out right now. Um, but yeah, I had that half done and then I'd kind of had a plan for what I was doing on the second half, but wasn't quite sure. And then I walked through it with everybody on Instagram and my stories kind of polling and getting everybody's opinions on how I was going to do the second half. And I'm really pleased with it. I have to say I did get some very, like, this is a very polarizing shawl color combination, apparently. Um, I'm trying to remember what I started out with. It was always this color, but I started doing, this half was the dandelion stitch, and then the second half I started doing, I think I was just doing half double crochet stripes instead of the dandelion stitch, and I wasn't liking the texture combination at all. Um, so then I was doing like half double crochet with some dandelions, and then ultimately I just decided the whole thing is going to be dandelion stitch. I'll talk about the yarn in a minute. But I had been polling on Instagram about like stitch combinations and like stripe sequences and should I do this or that. And I got so many people who were like, that green and gray. Nope, can't do that. It hurts, it hurts me, it hurts my eyes. And I was like, oh, well, I wasn't really asking that. Um, but I really like it. I think green and gray, I don't know. Like, I kind of have like a Christmas vibe going. Actually, it really match. I didn't even realize. Is this like a giant painting of like a barn? And it totally matches. That's great. It totally matches what I'm wearing. So I'll put this on. Um, I think the green and gray is lovely together. I really like green and gray. Um, probably one of my favorite color combinations, truth be told. Um, but some people just were not feeling it. They were really, really bothered by it. Um, like, I think that's so pretty. I don't know. I like it. <laughs> but yeah, apparently this green and that like it was too much for some people, which is fine. Like the cool thing about designing um, is I get to pick the colors I wanna make mine in, but you totally don't have to make the shawl in green or gray. And I know that it is kind of important to pick pattern sample colors that are gonna like speak to people. Cause I think more often than not, um, there's definitely people who will go way outside the box on color combos, but most often when you're looking on Ravelry at like a pattern listing, you immediately like you see like okay the fields cardigan is in yellow in her picture so you're like hmm, do i have yellow in my stash could i wear that yellow you don't have to make it the same color um so you are free to not use green and gray if that upsets you like feel free do another color combo but i think this is amazing and it matches my barn and i may take some finished object photos with it now knowing that it blends beautifully um, but yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out and all the math is mathing. I've got the spreadsheet all done with all my row by row stuff and my math is all solid, which is always fun. Um, so yeah, I just need to clean up the draft so it's not just like my notes and turn it into a pattern and then we'll do a testing call. But I ended up going with, yeah, all dandelion stitch throughout and then just like varied stripe sequences and then the, the mohair. I had mixed feelings on the mohair, but I am loving it. And a, something that a lot of people had said too is that if you're gonna do the stripes, it might be better to do the mohair or the contrast stripe in like another green shade or a, a color that blended better with the mohair. But I like the like majorly jarring contrast of this. Um, but again, you could fade it. You could do a, like even a mohair with the same color, but in a different base. Um, you could do the same color as this half, get two skeins, and then, so there's definitely options there. And then some people were like, well, I don't like mohair. You have to use mohair. Um, you can definitely sub in. A fingering weight would probably, mm, the gauge would actually probably be fine because the other two yard yarns, these two are fingering weight. This one is a mohair, so you probably could sub in a fingering weight, no issue. I may make that a suggestion to my testers. You're just not gonna get that light and airy bit. Um, oh, it's so pretty. So it's a one of a kind colorway, but wow, that's amazing. Um, or you could just use a lace weight if mohair is not for you. And I didn't think it was for me, but I'm kind of sold on it. <laughs> so the colors are the yarns that I'm using. Um, the colors were all dyed by Fiber for the People. 
They are unfortunately one of a kind colorways. Um, she does something called Lucky Strikes where she uses up leftover dye particles and bits and stuff like wiping off her counters and spoons. Um, so the main color, all fiber for the people yarns. The main color was Lily Pad. And they're actually all in different bases, um, which I did. I did gauge and make sure everything worked out, but it, this is definitely a shawl that you're starting at one end, working to the middle and then working back and blocking, unless your yarns are like completely different gauges, like you're not gonna wanna do like an Aran weight with a fingering weight, but as long as they're like close, um, I think you're gonna be fine. And then this is the gray. I don't need to show you the front every time, but the gray is called Pewter. And the mohair is called Algae and it is just amazing. Like, look at this. Look at this color. Look at it. So good. You might be able to hear our sump pump draining into our yard outside. If you can, think of algae. <laughs> yeah. I moved out here because in the room that we're renovating, currently they have a massive, I don't know what it's called, but some sort of contractor drywall drying fan. So big old fan noise. Um, so this was kind of the only room sort of quiet enough and I was gonna do it in my bedroom upstairs, but then I didn't wanna disturb my sick daughter who was sleeping in her room nearby. So yes, anyway, these are the colors. I love the green and gray, but feel free to hate it. I won't be offended, pick your own colors. I give you creative license to do so. So this is gonna be the dandelion something or another shawl. Something starting with D, I haven't, pinned it down yet, but wow, I really like it. Should I just wear it with all the strings? I think I should, because it just matches so well with the wall. And I was concerned I wasn't gonna like the mohair or that it was gonna be really sheddy or hard to work with or um, itchy. And I don't find that to be the case at all. Again, that's all personal sensitivity level and preference and all of that, but um, yeah, there's just gonna be strings, that's okay. I think it's lovely. And I had at some point like, said that I didn't like mohair, but now I wanna like buy more mohair and make like entire mohair garments. Um, so we'll see. But the mohair is definitely growing on me. And I just am really happy because I've been envisioning this shawl for quite some time and it's always nice when it kind of comes out. I had actually not planned on it all being dandelion stitch, but in the journey of creativity, it all came out that way and I really like it. So I hope you guys are excited about it too. I do tester calls on Instagram, um, so keep an eye out for that if you are interested in testing. It's a pretty straightforward, other than the increasing and decreasing, and learning the dandelion stitch, which I also have a tutorial for on YouTube if you'd like to go check that out in advance. Um, yeah, it's not super complex in any way. Um, and working with the mohair is slightly fiddlier than working with a normal yarn. Um, but again, you could sub in something else or you get, you get the hang of it after a couple stripes. So yeah, just something to think about. Keep an eye out on Instagram. Probably should be on my mailing list. Um, I often put tester calls in there, but more often than not, it's on Instagram first. And if you are curious about testing for me and what I look for, and even just testing in general, if you have questions on how to test for designers, um, I do have a video on that as well on how to be a great pattern tester. So you can check that out. And this is my only crochet finished object. And I do have a knit finished object as well. This was mostly finished, I think, last week when I showed you. I don't think I had put the collar on. I think I had like one and a half sleeves or something. Maybe one sleeve, I don't remember. Last time I showed you, this one was definitely done. These are both the Caress Cardigan. I have made this pattern multiple times. Um, Obviously I've made two for myself. We're expecting a son uh, at the end of summer, but I've made this for friends as well. It is a lovely pattern. All of Sandra's patterns are just incredible. If you have kids or grandkids or, come on, I had you all cute on there. Kids, grandkids, littles in your life. She has many lovely and giftable patterns that work up pretty quick because they're tiny. Um, so this one is, I think zero to three month size. It's itty bitty. That one I made larger. I think that one was either six to nine or six to 12 month. 
um, just because I had more of this yarn scrap that I wanted to use up. But this one I made tiny and I'm hoping we can either do, it's probably too big to do like birth announcements in, but I don't know, maybe. My boy is measuring large already, so, or above average, but really measurements are done. Um, but yeah, maybe it will be, he won't need it in early September, mid-September, whatever, whenever he's gonna be, due dates are a joke too. Uh, whatever this baby's showing up. I don't think this will fit him right away, but I'm hoping that we can either do family photos or Christmas photos or something. Um, so I usually hand make outfits, at least for me and my daughter. <laughs> don't usually get my husband in on it unless it's a beanie, but I'm hoping we can have some sort of coordinated family. Look, it even matches my shawl. Here's my outfit already. It's all set. No, I wore this cardigan last year. That'd be, whew, can't do that. Um, yeah. It's really lovely. Uh, the yarn that I used, I might have labels to show you. I tried to be, oh, did, they, did you dump all over the floor? That's weird. I was trying to pile my stuff there. I don't know if you can see it to block out that outlet where I have my light plugged, but that just didn't really work out. So have fun looking at my outlet. But the yarn that I used was Lion Brand. There's just, I got my shawl strings, yarn strings. Lion Brand Basic Stitch, got it at Joanne. Um, it is an acrylic, worsted weight, anti-pilling. It does have a, it's very soft, um, but it definitely, you know, feels acrylic. Uh, but I do, I've talked about this several episodes now, but I do think that's a good option for, for baby makes just because they're low maintenance and easy to clean spit off of and the like. Um, so the main color was olive. And then I don't know if I have the ball band for the other one, but it was almond tweed, I think, maybe. Are you it? I have another band. Yeah, almond tweed, look. I know stuff. Can you see that? I don't know if it's focusing, but yes. And I do obviously have another whole skein of this and I haven't decided if I want to return it or hang on to it with the thought of maybe incorporating it into something for my daughter so that they have matchy matchy things. Can't make her a whole sweater out of this, but maybe something color work. Um, we'll see, I don't know. I do have, and going through my yarn stash, I'm sorry, this episode's kind of all over the place and I'm looking all over the place because <laughs> my stuff is all over the place. But in going through my, by going through, I mean quickly in one night, grabbing it all and shoving it in bags and moving it to the basement. Um, I have some of it over there in a dresser that's mostly the acrylic and like used scrap kind of things um, of non-wool variety. I have a lot of acrylic that I want to either use up or de-stash or donate, but it's all like scraps. A lot of it's not full skeins. Um, I do have a de-stash page that I update periodically, but I haven't decided if I wanna like put up lots of like, maybe do like rainbow order, like lots of acrylic for somebody who does do like granny square type stuff. Or if you like acrylic bits, um, I have so much of it from when I did amigurumi and hats and stuff when I first started out. But now it's not something that I super love for garment making and a lot of it's scrappy, so it would have to be blankets, and I don't need any more blankets. We do all have a lot of blankets. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to decide. I don't wanna just like donate it all to like Goodwill or something, I could, um, but it is a lot of bits. So maybe I'll lot it out for like super cheap and see if anybody wants it or something. If you're interested, let me know. Um, what was I talking about? Acrylic yarn, yes, <laughs> Chris Cardigan. Uh, I really love the little shawl collar on this. I think it's super sweet. The buttons were just some that I got at Joann's um, as well. Nothing super exciting. I'm sorry that's blowing out. The light is doing its best with the situation. It has been given. I think the raglan increases are beautiful on this. I just, I love it. I may have put the, cause these open, button opposite. Oh, do they button the same? Are you the same? No, they're opposite. So I think one of the, I think there's some rule about like what side boys stuff buttons on versus girl stuff. I ain't got time for that. I think, I think on one of these, I messed up the button placement. Um, so the button bands are reversed on these two. I'm not sure what, I think this one might be right. Again, I really don't care. Um, on the gender location of buttons on cardigans for infants. But yeah, I think that's the only part I messed up on. Other than that, I think I pretty well executed this and it's adorable and I love it. And my boy's gonna look so cute in it. 
And I've also realized I have, this is really not the most practical use of this blanket, but we're gonna go with it. Um, I also realized I have no cute hangers for photos. Uh, I have lots of either wood or like, I have a couple like fuzzy velory ones with like bows for my daughter stuff where I've taken photos, but I only have ugly plastic ones. <laughs> Everything else is pink. Um, or I could have used the gray ones, but they were too big. I don't have anything that tiny. So I need to get like some itty bitty wooden hangers or something to take pictures on. Like that's dumb, but I don't know. I feel like I, cause I don't always want to do sweater flat knees. Sometimes I want a hanging picture. So that is a thought that I had about that. I do have a finished pair of socks, which I forgot about until I just saw them in this bag. And the ends aren't woven in, but they're good enough. And the sock blockers are somewhere in the basement. So we're gonna just go with it. These are, I'll just hold one up because it looks slightly better. These are a no pattern pair. Stop blowing out white. We're doing, we're doing our best and forgetting about the rest. I just had an absolute panic that I wasn't recording. For <laughs> it is recording. It's been recording for 23 minutes. We're good. Whew, been a day. These are a no pattern pair of knitted socks in Patton's Croy mid-century stripes. Had a couple of skeins of these in stash that I was either gifted or sent by um, podcast viewers. So I wanted to use up some of these and I really do like this color sequence. You can see it really well on the bottom of the foot here. Really pretty color combo. It actually shows up better on camera. I feel like that peach and the orange here aren't contrasty enough. They're pretty low contrast in person, um, which kind of bugs me, but you can see it on camera. And again, they're just socks. So, and I say again, like I've said it before. Um, <laughs> I think I said that in my Instagram post today, but it's just socks. It's fine. Um, so it's basically a vanilla sock. I just wear the stripes changed color. I did a pearl and pearl. So a plain self-striping sock. And then I used up various scraps and bits um, for the heels, toes, and cuffs. And yeah, this is my fourth maybe pair of socks of the year. And I actually have another, my only whip. I guess we'll give it its own whip section, but I have one sock whip to share. So last time I shared um, that we had dyed, I think I can put the reel in. If I can, I'll put that up on the screen, but we had dyed some yarn using leftover food dye from when we were doing Easter eggs. And I was trying to do like a self striping. I definitely came up with a striping, but it's not the self striping. I was planning on like self striping, like those previous socks with like chunky thicker stripes that would require a lot more math and effort. Um, but what I did is we dyed it in the jars that we had been doing the eggs in. So I just like put the ring of yarn around and stuck it down into all the little jars to make them kind of sort of even stripes. And it came out super fun super fun. <laughs> so this, I think at this point you've seen the reel. And then it came out like this wound up. I only have a little nugget left. Sorry. Really fun, really vibrant. And in here, it kind of seems like all the colors are of even, um, I don't know that you notice them evenly. I don't know what I'm trying to say there, but color, not color distribution, but just like they all pop evenly, I guess. Um, but then in the actual socks made up, I feel like the, the blues and purples and like the orange are really dominant. And it's probably because of oh, this one side. I'm sorry. The light is coming from over there. Um, but it's probably because I used a contrast purpley blue yarn, but look at that. They're super fun. The pink in reality, it's showing up brighter on screen, um, but the pink in reality really kind of fades into the background. And I was worried about the bits of white, but I think they actually add a lot of fun character. Um, this contrast skein is also from Food Dye that at one point um, when I did cake decorating, I, I have a bunch of Wilton Food Dyes, which is like a food dye paste that you mix in. Um, so it's not just the drops, but you could dye with the as well. Um, I had a bunch spill in the container that I stored it in. So I just kind of dumped all the dye in and dyed some yarn and that's what this purple blue is. But these are super fun. Uh, so it just, it did like this micro stripe thing. And I love how with like a single row stripe, it ends up looking like zigzags. Um, Cause that's just how 
you know, the nature of knit stitches. So plain vanilla sock in, it was only a 50 gram skein, so they're a little bit shorter. And I'm trying to make sure that I use up basically all of it. I really need to learn how to do toe up socks, which isn't like a hard thing. It's just like actually sitting down and changing the method of how I do socks, which is pretty mindless for me. Um, so I, I do, <laughs> do want to learn to do that. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to think if I did anything unusual on these. I did hold, so this is, this was a skein of Patton's Cry as well. Uh, it was not a bear, but it was not an undyed bear skein, but it was the colorway muslin. So it was a very neutral, beigey, undyed sort of feeling. I'm going to sneeze. Give me a moment. Allergy season, pregnant. Am I going to get sick now? It's just <laughs> so many things. Um, but it was an undyed-ish skein of Patton's Cry Muslin that we did this on, 50 grams, because uh, that's all I had on hand. You could definitely dye with more than that. Um, and then I ended up holding this, which was, I think, a nitpick skein of undyed bear yarn. I did it a while ago, so I remember, but I love the blues and purples, like, breaking in there. Um, that I held double. This was fingering weight, and this is more, it's sold as a fingering weight, but it's more of a sport weight, um, so it's a little thicker. So I doubled up the fingering weight and it's a little more decay-ish um, on the heel, toe, and cuff. Makes for a really, you know, I mean, you can't tell density on camera, but a really thick, cushy, well-padded heel, toe, and cuff. And I don't think it like changes the, like it's not a weird shape or anything. I did do the ribbing in a tighter needle or smaller needle and then the rest of the sock is all the same. And I was worried the toe was gonna be like bigger than the rest of the sock, but it's, it's not, it's all right. So just an interesting little experiment there, and I would not be able to replicate this exact yarn if I tried, but I think I think the two, they definitely don't match match. They definitely don't match match as far as like the stripes lining up or anything, but it's kind of chaotic enough that it doesn't matter because um, it's really just almost just a variegated and not an actual striping yarn because um, none of the stripes actually go all the way around the circumference of the sock diameter around the sock uh, so they they match good enough and hopefully when I get down to the end of the sock I did split them into equal amounts but hopefully we end up with the same amount of rows for both and I don't have any leftover so yeah that's my only only real whip and I'm almost done with that probably finish that up this week I did quite a bit of it today as we were snuggling on the couch I don't have any other whips. I want, I want to have some other whips, but between my stash being kind of bagged up in the basement and also just right now, I can't decide other than socks. And I don't want to make a whole bunch of socks in the summer because I just don't want a whole bunch of socks, but I can't decide what to make, um, both design wise and personal wise, other than just baby stuff, which I also only need so much tiny baby stuff. And I have this kid's whole life to make them stuff. So I don't need to like stockpile stuff. Um, but from a design point, I, I'm working on this shawl, obviously getting this out. And usually I do a garment or two a year, um, but I can't, I can't decide. Cause like sizing to my body right now, I know what my normal measurements are, um, my normal measurements, but obviously being halfway through a pregnancy right now, I'm large and getting larger, which is totally fine. I love being pregnant, but it's hard to design and then t try something on and see if I like the fit enough to um, grade it for multiple sizes knowing that it like is flattering because it's hard enough to guess on grading other sizes but I at least normally have my body to go off of um, whereas right now like positive ease is totally a different story because of the bump um, so I have at least one if not two sweater quantities that I wanted to be designing in this year, um, but I, I don't know. I don't feel confident enough in my numbers to be able to not really try it on and be like, oh yeah, that fits well. And I also don't want to do designing like maternity patterns or postpartum. Like I don't. That's not a niche that I want to be in. Um, so I'm trying to figure out what I want to design this year. And I know that come fall, like usually when I'm doing the most of my designing and pattern releases, like I'm gonna have an infant and that's gonna be the priority. So I'm just trying to figure out 
figure out what I'm doing with my yarn and my business right now. And in the same vein, I'm not sure what to make on a personal level for myself because I usually like to have at least a, a personal knit project or something. Um, I really like making garments. I like wearing stuff that I've made. But at the same time, like I don't want to make stuff that's only going to fit me pregnant. I don't want to make stuff that's specifically for like postpartum type stuff because size can vary obviously there. Um, and also just, I know that in the first couple months, fourth trimester and the like, um, the first time around, it again can vary with each, with each kid, but with my daughter, I didn't want to wear a lot of my handmade stuff because there was just a lot of, well, stuff going on and I didn't want to have to be blocking um, handmade garments or washing spit up or whatever other kind of stuff gets on it um, out of precious handmade things. And I'm not someone that's super precious about my stuff, but like I don't want to be cleaning poop out of my wool sweaters. So and it's obviously something you'd have to address right away. So I don't want the hassle of like designing for right after I've had a baby or making items right after I had a baby. I don't want to make stuff right now that I'm not going to be able to wear until like next whenever. Um, so I don't know what to make. I have a bunch of patterns in mind that I would like to make. I had yarns in my stash that were a sign like I wanted to make an elf male um, knit sweater, which is a fairly fitted. I was going to make it slightly boxier, um, two color slip stitch color work type sweater. But now I like I don't know if it would really fit pregnant. And like, do I really want it? Like, am I committed to making it and then wearing it six months, however many months down the road from now? Am I still gonna, I don't know. This is kind of just a personal ramble, but this is where I'm at. And if you're ever been in the same spot or have any sizing changes type stuff, make the stuff for the body that you have. But also I know that, yeah, throw a baby in there and whatever, like, I don't know. Sweaters are expensive and it's a lot of time and Designs are a lot of time and emotional energy. Uh, so I just, I don't know what to make. I am kind of feeling like I want to make a mohair like ranunculus now because everybody and their mother and their sister-in-law have made a ranunculus sweater. I think if you're a knitter, it's been a very popular pattern for like years now um, with like all sorts of modifications and whatnot. I kind of want to make something all, all mohair. I also kind of want to design something all mohair. I do have one garment design in mind, not mohair, but for like a non-fitted like Ruana type garment thing, um, which is like a cross between like a shawl and a cape and a sweater. But yeah, I don't know. I don't really, I could do cardigans. But again, I would have to take photos or get somebody else to model. I don't know. I just don't know. So if anybody has suggestions, um, particularly in summer, I really like to do tanks and like crop lacy bot bottom things. And I don't know. I don't know if I want to wear them this summer or if I would wear them again after that or if I wear them this summer and they're like out over my belly, if that's going to like block them out weird and then they're going to be like super A-line when I go, I don't, this is a long rant. Um, but things that I do have in mind to make, I need to go get... Um, sickness willing, uh, we have a couple car trips coming up, so I need to get some simple projects, obviously socks, but, um, I do want to get yarn to make a Be Brave baby blanket, which is my only knit pattern. It's a super basic, um, knit baby blanket pattern, uh, that I designed when I was pregnant with my daughter. So I want to make one for my son, um, in different colors. The yarn that I made it in is discontinued, I believe, um, or at least not readily available anymore. Um, so I need to find a sub for that and I want to get that started because it's, that's a very mindless, just basically just knitting with a little bit of purling on the edges, uh, blanket for colors striped. Um, so I want to do that. And then I had in mind that I was going to make a cropped bathing suit, cover up granny square, like boho festival toppy looking thing. Um, that I, I wouldn't wear it as an actual top, but I would like one over a bathing suit. Um, so I wanted to do like a granny square, probably like all white or cream, um, granny square constructed like tank with like fringe coming down off of the bottom, which in my mind <laughs> sounds really cute. But as I'm thinking about it more, I'm thinking that the fringe is going to like 
part around <laughs> my stomach <laughs> like a curtain um which i don't know if that's a look that i want um so i could definitely make the granny squares without the without the fringe but the fringe kind of kind of was selling me on it um, so I had bookmarked or favorited or cued or something, a bunch of cute granny square pattern options on Ravelry. But now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, mm, maybe I need to rethink. Um, cause yeah, I don't want like a parted drapery of fringe <laughs> over my belly, um, this summer. That's not a look that I want. So if I can, I guess do the fringe shorter or something, I don't know. I just really just give me all of your pregnant people making ideas. Or if you have baby suggestions or not baby suggestions, I gonna have a baby I don't need suggestions there um, but suggestions on baby patterns those are always welcome um, I had bookmarked or saved or whatever favorited I guess a bunch of cabled beanies for infants I do want to make one of those and I have some yarn and stash that I could do that with so that's a project I want to work on I have not successfully cabled anything start to finish yet um, but I figured I could do an infant beanie uh, so I do want to do that and then I have squares in the basement that I made when like we first got married that never got connected into a blanket that I want to finish for my son as well. And yeah, I want to get this design out into testing and <sighs> thanks for being here to listen to my, my size. I'm glad, I'm glad I did this episode. I'm sorry if it's a little bit just unusual in content and layout and rambling um but all of you gave me a lot of feedback last time on that you're here for whatever it is i'm here for and if i want to talk about designs or ramble that you're here for that so i really appreciate you thank you for being part of my making journey and hanging out with me on the internet and listening to me ramble about yarn and the like i hope you're having a great week hope you're healthy i hope i'm healthy by the time this goes up and I hope you have some great makes in mind. If you have any suggestions for me, send them my way. And I will catch you in episode 52, possibly in my new office space. I can't record in there until we get it mostly set up because it's very empty and echoey right now. Like I could go sit in the empty room, but it wouldn't sound good. So we'll see. Um, but good things are coming soon. And I appreciate all of you. Have a happy whatever and whenever you're watching this. And I will see you next time.